put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The Messenger Jeanne d'Arc Movie Review A war has been waged between the French and the English for upwards of a hundred years. The heir to the throne of France, the Dauphin, which actually does mean dolphin. I was wondering for years and I didn't really get around to looking it up. And it's apparently like the dolphin is the the like the the logo or whatever it's called back then, even the, the, the shield, but anyway. The Dauphin has not been crowned king, which would tremendously help morale. And in comes Joan, a peasant girl from the small village Doremi Fasol. She has no formal education, but she insists that she can help. She was sent by God. And without any other options, the Dauphin agrees, and she soon joins the officers leading the armies. Can she inspire her people? Can she actually help win the Hundred Year War? Uh, yes, those who actually know history already know the answers to those questions, but this is for you know, the, the movie's test audiences. Look it up. And this is another in the series of films that I first watched years ago that really made an impression on me that I've seen countless times since that I love and that I own a copy of. Now, I distinctly remember when I bought the film on VHS, the, the only copy I've ever owned of it. I was getting to the cash register of, yeah, you know, buying something in an electronic store or something, and the film was on display by the the counter, and I looked at it, and I knew that I had seen Mila Jovovich's name before, and that I was already a fan. I I don't know what I had watched. I probably had watched The Fifth Element by then, which I probably will not review because I cannot make heads or tails of that film. I've watched it so many times. I love Luc Besson's films, but I I don't know what to make of it. It's it's extraordinarily well made and I couldn't I just don't know what to make of it. But but anyway, yeah probably at least that, possibly other things, but yeah, I, I, the film was probably recent on VHS at the time, but yeah, and the, you know, the, the guy at the counter said the war scenes in it are incredible, and yeah, I have to agree, and yeah, you know, that was, that was enough, bought it, and yeah. Now, I made some last minute notes once again. The film does... Do, right after we've met the Dauphin, he is like... You know, he, he talks briefly about the, you know, several of the... Three of his leading officers of the armies. And... You know, he basically just, it's a massive exposition dump. He just says, you know, everything. It's, you know, these are things that, you know, everyone hearing it knows already. He's just saying it out. Like, it's not completely, there, there is kind of an explanation, but it's still, yeah, very, very obvious of a way to introduce, because there are a lot of characters in this. Now, the... 
Jeanne loves her country, her god, and her king. And there is a... She's very certain and she's very happy to talk of the messages she has from God, although only to priests and the Dauphin. The film is incredibly tense, even when, you know, even when not in action scenes. I don't know if you can hear. Birds are chirping like crazy and it's kind of windy too. I hope it isn't too distracting. Yeah, there, there's a lot of symbolism, a lot of metaphor. Jeanne respects authority, but she also really demands attention. She, she really does consider herself just, you know, a, a vessel for God. She, so everything she has to say from God, she feels is more important than anything else, basically. Now, I find it well worth noting about this film, you know, it is very much about God and faith, and I've always been an atheist, it's pretty much like, I don't remember exactly the age I was, but I distinctly remember my father telling me, this is what Christians believe, but it's, but it's wrong, pretty much, and I've there are that my my relationship with religion has changed a lot over the years the you know watch earlier videos on my channel that are about you know theism and you'll see i used to be much more aggressive about it but i never believed even when there were times where it seemed like I wasn't always completely mm, I wasn't always completely rational you, you, rationalist I did when I was a kid sometimes think that there was some like I think luck or fate or something like that but but anyway I've always been an atheist and yet I've loved this film you know, since, I mean, it came out in 98 or so, I've probably watched it, yeah, pretty much since 99 and onwards, and, yeah, it's, and it's not the kind of thing where I watch and, and, you know, it's in spite of, you know, in spite of the whole God thing, no, it's, you know, I, I love the film as a whole, and I think, you know, Jeanne's, determination and certainty is infectious and you you want to follow her and yeah I think that's extraordinary as a because this is not really a movie that is made to yeah it's it's not really made to necessarily point out that you know this must be true or this must not be true of religious aspects, you know, Life of Brian is not an anti-religious movie or anti-religion anti movie, but it's a movie that very much points out, you know, makes fun of certain aspects of the followers of religions. This movie doesn't do that either. This movie is purely, it's never really on the side of either. It, it's open-minded. And Jeanne is not very patient, and there there is this ongoing, this is running gag of one of the officers of the army's la ear. He has a mouth on him, and Jeanne hates that, and she she tells him immediately, you know. And again, this is this is a guy who is much bigger, much older, much stronger, and, you know, he has more authority. She immediately just tells him, do not swear. And, yeah, she, you know, yeah, he has a tendency to swear, and she doesn't just put up with that. That's, yeah. 
and and some have pointed out that it's kind of anachronistic swearing. I, I don't know that it's mostly there aren't that many f bombs, for example. It's mostly the the d word and yeah, I, I don't know would they not have used that back then? At least some some of the more aggressive. I mean, certainly everyone in the film, almost everyone, is god fearing, but you know these are you know officers in in war i feel like they might you know people do things in war that they wouldn't do anywhere else now as as a war film you see a lot of siege weapons and you know fortifications different defenses and weaponry used when you know fighting over a, a fortress or the like the, the various army officers can get really frustrated with Jen because of yeah she doesn't really she doesn't take orders basically she you know the only per the only entity she takes orders from is God so everything else and everybody else and yeah they that they they get frustrated with that and there are sort of again all basically everyone pretty much every character in this is God fearing they don't all believe that she has been sent by God, but the you can tell that there's one character in particular. He keeps, you know, gradually. Sometimes he really believes in her. Sometimes he doesn't quite. And yeah. And among the siege weapons, there's this trebuchet, which is like it's not a catapult. It can throw the rock way further. Age of Empires two. You know the the trip. You gotta you gotta have a castle, and be. I think it's only the the imperial age that you can actually buy it. You can get a castle in castle age, but I don't think you get the trebuchet until the imperial age. But it's like you know you set it up. It it can drive and then it can be set up. Only once set up, it can shoot and it has this arm kind of thing that grabs and and the, yeah. There's some really great stuff with that in this. Now. I'd say that the characters, again, there are like maybe a half dozen or so. They don't all get a lot of screen time, but they all do get some really defining moments. Like you, almost even minor characters, like you hardly ever see the Dauphin's wife. And that's also noteworthy. She has almost no impact on the story. And that's yeah that says a lot about the time and the role of women in that time even this I mean she's supposed to be one of the most powerful in the land not just women but yeah she's you know second or third in command basically and she's in two scenes and has one spoken line of maybe three words but but yeah you know the 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 Dauphin, his mother-in-law, his council, you know, there are at least three officers, and yeah, I think three officers of the army, and then she has, Jeanne has someone to take care of her immediate needs, and he's also there. Everyone gets a few but very, you know, defining moments for them. Now, and, and along with the, you know, this not being for or against religion but being open-minded you know if if you're the type of atheist or just if you're non-christian and you hate like christian you know kind of yeah the the yeah, ceremony and such you are going to hate this film because there you see a ton of praying confession you know various yeah now, and the movie is two hours and twenty-five minutes, and I find it completely gripping. I cannot look away when it's you know going. And again, this in spite of the fact that I've watched it so many times. Mila, me, Jovovich's Mila Jovovich's. I can't believe I mispronounced her. I've said her name like. 
hundreds of times over the years. Anyway, Mila Jovovich's Joan is a... She's not presented as a hero, which she is to the French. You know, this was a really big deal. You know, she did... <laughs> yeah, she really made an impact. And it's nicely subversive that this has us make up our own mind about her motives and actions. And, yeah, Jovovich's portrayal of Joan is intense, passionate, but lacking in world experience, a sense of realism and pragmatism, and sometimes, even, in, in some cases, even maturity. And she gives the English several chances to surrender. I should also note, this is... Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. This is... Yeah, one of the first roles I ever saw her in, and Luc Besson cast her, and they were married at the time. It's like with Fifth Element in that regard. And, yeah, in Fifth Element, she was a more... Like, that role was pretty much written for her. Actually, possibly literally wrote, written for her, but where this role is a bit... Some people say she really didn't fit... I. I feel like, and, and that her, her acting wasn't as, you know, wasn't up to par. I disagree. If, if there's anything, it's the writing and the direction, because the character here is, yeah, very much portrayed as, you know, like I said, very passionate. Like, at least one critic said that, you know, there's no nuance to the performance. She's always running and yelling and, you know, talking fast and all this. Yeah, I, it's, it's the way the character is written and, you know, I mean, granted, the, the critic, I believe, wrote that back in 98, so, you know, she hadn't been in that many movies and certainly hadn't had very many starring roles by then. I, you know, technically, Fifth Element, I'm not even sure you could quite call, Bruce Willis is definitely the, the male protagonist. I'm not sure. I guess maybe kind of she's the female protagonist, but you know, yeah, there there's there are bits where she doesn't do very much and so yeah, anyway, this is one of her really one of her first roles, one of her first really big roles. So, you know, you didn't know at the time, but since she's proven she can deliver very distinctly different performances and yeah, but in, in this, yeah, she's constantly, like, on fire, and it makes sense. It's the way the character is presented to us, and it's simultaneously, like I said, it can really frustrate the officers, because, you know, she'll, like, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll meet, and she'll be like, well, let's go into battle, and they'll be like, we gotta you know, there's there's some stuff we need to take care of first, and she's like, fine, I'll go myself. And it's, yeah. And at the same time, she's also, the this determination is, like I said earlier, really kind of infectious. You know, people do rally around her, and you can understand why. It really, it, you know, there's a, drive has a lot to do with how, how well you do, in part because others will react to that. You know, it, when when we see someone not asking any questions and just going ahead, we get, you know, it sort of, it gives the impression that they know exactly what to do and that they are correct because they're, they're so certain of themselves. So we become certain of them as well. And, yeah, I, I think the, the film and Jurovich does great at showing that about Joan, that she is, yeah, she can be really frustrating, but she can also be someone to really follow. The character of... And also, since this, 
Jovic has starred in many action flicks and appeared in other action flicks as well. Now, Nostalgia Critic or Doug Walker did a editorial not too long ago in which he said that blockbusters were not expected to be good, were actually expected to be bad in the years between 96 and 2001. And that does, you know, this, like with Con Air, falls into that time. And it was basically that the films were too effects driven, leaving too little character, uh, too little time for character development. And, you know, this was, yeah, like he said, this was right after CGI really made it big. And now that, you know, it was like Jaws. Spielberg wanted more of the shark, but it looked so fake that he had to tease it and have characters reflecting on, you know, the this dangerous shark and having maybe hunted sharks before and such. And yeah, that gave his character development instead. And that was also true of earlier effects films that, yeah, we can only show it so much. So we spend more time with characters. This one, there are a lot of effects, but like I said before, I feel that the characters, again, they have very defining moments. So, yeah, but, yeah, I and, and the, the battle scenes don't really take over, I would say. It is a movie that very much focuses on the characters, especially we, we get a lot about Jean from, yeah, I know I keep going back and forth between French and English pronunciation. I just want to point out that I am noticing it as well. There are some notable historical accuracies to this. Meanwhile, it does also take some liberties. I would say that they all aid in storytelling, make the story more focused. And this does very much show the the English people as just one-sided villains and really despicable. It kind of it almost kind of needs to because it's not really a film about who was right and who was wrong in the conflict. It's about Joan and her leading these people and yeah, the, the film shows the English the way she perceived the English and thus you know, we cheer along with the troops when she is, you know, leading them into battle and such. I think this is, I'm not sure at least I've, that I've seen any other version of this story, though, you know, I have of course heard of it outside of this film, you know, history class and such. The the battle scenes are big, brutal, violent, sometimes cheesy and gory, and yeah, yeah, a, a lot of fun. And again, they they don't really take over. There are several big battles, but they don't really. None of them go on for too long, and there is breathing room between them. And they also just, you know, you get the sense they're, they're clearly not equally big and the victories are not equal, you know, and, and they're not entirely one-sided either. But yeah, the you can very much tell, like even if you can, uh, didn't really pay attention to what they were saying about whether they're going into, you know, a smaller fortress or if this is when they take the really big important one you know even if you don't look at the size of the fortress and the amount of men the the 
how powerful the the weaponry is, both defensive and offensive, even offensive. It's yeah, it's very clear from the way it's filmed and the way people react how big of a victory it is and there aren't like just a ton of really big neatly won victories you get a sense of the reality of how difficult combat is and how quickly it can turn and yeah and there, there are these you know little heroic moments where we see the the named characters really you know be really badass that includes your boy she's yeah you know she doesn't necessarily she you know she she more leads them into battle and such than herself killing you know it's not she's trying to get her king crowned she's not there to just kill a bunch of English you know troops now the but but yeah it it does fairly well at not just having any one character just or even several named characters just run in and the moment they get in there you know then you know the battles are won you can you can follow why you know why is the battle being won or lost and yeah it it's it makes sense it also shows the the grimy gritty ugly you know realities of war torn lands and you know pillaging burning yeah, there are some really nasty things, and like I said, you know, people will do things in war that they would never do outside of it, and yeah, you see some of that, and you do see it on both sides. The film is a little more artsy than you might expect, but I'd say it really works, and Besson brings his, excuse me, great eye for visuals to this very much. The this has been called Braveheart for Women, and yeah, I can I can kind of see that. And each time I watch it, I always look forward to the same upcoming scenes, whilst also enjoying the current scenes. And I will go more into which these are in the spoiler video. Joan of Arc, The Messenger. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.